took me one year to create three of the hardest VFX shots that I've ever had to do for a short film. And I filmed the whole process, and here's how I did it. My short film, Motherly Lovecraft, is on dust right now, so go watch that before you watch this and come back. Also, stick to the end of this video because the last shot kind of broke me. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh, this looks so bad. In the film, there are three shots that I'm kind of worried about. The problem is that there's these doors that open to a portal to space to reveal this giant Lovecraftian cosmic monster. So it's hard. And these three shots are kind of each individually ambitious and hard for their own reasons. So let's see what I can do. The plan. So I went ahead and made a shitty animatic of these shots that I'm trying to do. So the first shot is the big reveal shot. The doors slowly open up to see the monster, which I want to be this giant tentacle creature with thousands of tentacles. The problem is at this moment, I actually don't know how I'm going to make the monster. But one thing I am going to do in blocking is have the actress be in front of the monster, kind of obscuring it. So that way we can have this Lovecraftian mystery of like what actually is the monster while also hiding the CGI a bit. The second shot, we don't have to do a large tentacle monster, thank God, but it's still kind of a crazy shot. In this one, she gets dragged by the monster and the camera dollies with her to the other side of the door to space and she grabs onto the door before she falls in. This one doesn't have like a lot of crazy CGI, but I sort of have no clue how we're going to film it with the budget that we have. For the final shot, the protagonists are running away from a giant tentacle that bursts through the door behind them. I have a pretty small amount of destruction simulation knowledge, and I've never animated a tentacle before, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so those are the shots I want to do. Let's uh, figure it out. <laughs> Okay, for this monster reveal shot, the first thing I want to figure out is how the hell I'm actually going to make the monster. So the problem is I want to have this giant tentacle monster made up of thousands and thousands of tentacles, but to animate thousands of thousands of tentacles just isn't feasible. But then I remembered something. I remembered in the movie Monsters, directed by Gareth Edwards, because he wasn't an animator, he used a rope physics system to make these undulating animations without having to animate anything. And that got me thinking. Why why do I have to animate it when I could just simulate it? So because it's thousands of tentacles, instead of a rope physics, I thought it would be better to use Blender's hair physics. If you think about it, tentacles are the hair of the octopus, where instead of rendering hair, I'll instance a 3D model of a tentacle that I made onto each hair particle. You can do that with a modifier called the particle instance modifier, kind of a perfect name for it. So instead of hair, it's tentacles. Then to animate it, I make the hair dynamic and I set the gravity to zero. Then I'll add a turbulence effect to make the hair undulate like tentacles. So that's the theory. Let's uh, let's do it in practice. <laughs> no way it actually worked. Maybe all these other shots won't be as hard. All right. So we just got back from filming. It's time to do the VFX. So we're gonna start on the first shot that I've been worried about, and it's this monster reveal shot here. So I already have the monster all prepped. So how we filmed it was pretty simple. We just put a green screen behind the doorway, and then we put a light behind her to cast proper lighting as if the sun was behind her in the scene. So I'm gonna start to begin to key. Ugh, okay, hair like this is kind of difficult to key because it's very fine and it's bright going to like green. There's a few techniques to fix that. Maybe I'll add something called key cleaner. That actually fix up quite a bit. It's kind of difficult to get all these fine details, but I'm not terribly worried because at the end, we're gonna make it look fine with all the glows and all that stuff. So let's start bringing in and actually compositing stuff together. I'm gonna bring in our tentacle. Uh, looks pretty cheesy, but with all the comping and stuff, it'll look fine. Let's also add our sun. So this is just a sun stock footage I'm adding. Then we'll just color this, this kind of pink like that. And then we're gonna increase the exposure, kind of crank the exposure a little bit. So let's ask the space background. I mean, it looks pretty bad, but we'll, uh, we'll make it look really good. All right, I've kind of started doing more comping and stuff, making the, things look good and the comp looks fine but if we had a sun right here we would probably have a lot of glow so I'm gonna add a bunch of glows 
and then I'm gonna add some grain on top of everything. Those little secret sauces at the end, that really makes it feel a lot better. So even if the key wasn't amazing, I can, you know, use all these effects to kind of distract from it. I knew it was all gonna work. So um, yeah, that shot's done. On to the next one. So for the second shot, she's getting dragged into space. And this one on paper is kind of the most ambitious shot. And it took me a while to actually even figure out logistically how to pull this off where she's getting dragged and then she's magically dangling in space all in one shot. Also, you have to keep in mind, we have a limited time in the space and we have limited budget. There's not really a logistical way to have stunts on set with like wires and stuff like that, which would probably be how the Hollywood do it. But how I broke it down was pretty simple. At first, she has normal gravity, but then when she's in space, she's effectively, she's just holding on to something like a monkey bar. So there has to be some sort of way to switch from her being horizontal to being effectively vertical. So what we did was a digital Texas switch. Because the camera will wipe past the door frame, we can use that as a stitch point to hide two different shots of her. So what we did was film two plates, one of her being dragged by our wonderful grips while we dolly to the other side of the door. Then we filmed a shot of her on a green screen like a month later of her jumping and catching a pole so we can realistically get that weightless gravity effect so all I have to do in post is just rotate her 90 degrees and she effectively looks like she's dangling in space. That's effectively how we filmed it. So I'm gonna go and start comping this and see what we can do. Okay, so to stitch these two shots, I'm gonna use the natural uh, fade to black that the door has to have a CG takeover that I'll do in Blender. Brute Force matched the same exact camera move and speed from this shot to go to this one. So it will transition into the CG world, which will work really well. And then we'll have the shot of her jumping and catching their little poles here. Okay, so now that I've lit it, I think I'm going to now render this out, bring it into After Effects. Okay, so now the CG is rendered and I did my wipe transition to the CG takeover. So now let's just key the footage of her on the pole. Not that kind of, this shot's pretty weird because we didn't have a full enough green screen for this, obviously. Short films are expensive. I'm gonna roto brush out everything. So now with the shot rotoscoped, I'm gonna add key light to the shot to uh, take away some of that extra green and some spill suppressor to take away the green. All right, so now what we're gonna do is rotate her and put her into the actual shot. All right, so I really had to brute force my way to make this shot kind of work and get her into the right spot and everything. But once I did, this is a pretty sick shot. Okay, I'm pretty proud of this. So let's add all of my fun effects sauces at the end, chromatic aberration glows, and um, let's add some lens flares as well to make it like look nice. <laughs> This shot was pretty tough, I'm gonna be honest, but uh, because it was a lot of just tinkering to make it work. But once it worked, it worked. Hopefully the next shot won't be as hard. For this third shot, it's the tentacle bursting through the door. And honestly, out of all of them, this was the easiest to film. It was just them running past camera and the camera's on a tripod, which should make it easier. Should at least. <laughs> so before I start animating the tentacle, I wanna see if I can test out some destruction simulation stuff. I've done some in the past, but it wasn't really intuitive. But I've seen ways to make it easier. There's an add-on for Blender called RBD Labs, which it makes it easier to do destruction things. So I'm gonna download that and see if that makes life easier. Okay, so I did a quick test with RBD Lab and I kind of just had it go through the wall here. And it looks pretty good. And I added a tentacle in there for <laughs> test purposes. It looks pretty bad. <laughs> but the wood itself looks good for a test. And I think that means it's going to be a lot easier when I actually do the real shot. Let's try to set up the real shot and animate the tentacle and see if I can really do it. Okay, so I've replicated the room as best as I can. I want the door to like kind of bust through with the force of a thousand windows. I added a simple sphere to break the door open just like that 
It, the, the wood simulation turned out way better than I expected. Now that I've done the destruction, I know it's kind of backwards, I'll animate the tentacle to that. So let's add the tentacle and see what I can do. Ugh. Ugh, this looks so bad. The problem is, historically, tentacles are like one of the hardest things to animate. I'm not a really great animator, so I, I, I don't know. I really don't know if I have the ability to do this. The worst part about this is like, the whole film kind of hinges on this one shot. On top of that, this isn't the only tentacle shot that I need to do in this piece. Maybe if I keep animating and try a bit more. If I don't get this done, then the film I spent thousands of dollars of my own money will fail. Who even cares anyway? Nobody watches short films. And the people who do watch the short films just assume the countless hours of work was done by AI anyways. So what's the even fucking point? I failed. I don't know. I feel like I just put so much pressure on myself. You know, I come from indie filmmaking where you do everything producing, directing, writing, editing. You do all these things, you wear so many hats, but sometimes you wear too many hats and they'll topple over. And I think that's what happened. How can I not animate a fucking tentacle? I don't know, man. There's gotta be a better way. Wait, there's a better way. Hey, how's it going? Can you animate a tentacle for me? Sure. And that's it, how I made the three hardest VFX shots that I've ever had to do for a short film. You know, sometimes it is okay to ask for help and let other people use their talents to fill in the gaps that you don't have. And not just Santino, but everybody a part of this project helped in some way that I couldn't and it made the project better because I'm asking for help. Each individual person brought their own talents to make the film even better. I learned a lot making this entire project. I made a little playlist here that you can watch uh, the entire process of how we made it. And here you can watch the short film if you haven't already. Thank you so much and remember to subscribe, like, and comment, and I appreciate y'all.